Hey guys, KS here. Thanks for joining me today as always. So I'm excited to bring to you guys today the Steyr S9A1. Now, if you remember last year on the channel, I featured the M9A1 and I was extremely impressed. So much so that I actually went back and featured it in my year end review. It was one of my top guns for the year on the channel. Um, and uh, for a lot of different reasons, a lot of it being the ergonomics and the shootability, of course, we're gonna revisit that with this S9 because there are some similarities and definitely some differences between the two. Uh, but I was really excited to get into the S9. I've been uh, kind of eyeing it for a while, and there happened to be one that showed up uh, locally at one of my local gun stores around here, and I decided to bite the bullet, no pun intended, and, uh, and dive into this and see what it's all about. Now we're going to go ahead and dive deep into this thing. Uh, of course, we're going to be looking at specs and features. There'll be some shooting along the way, and I'll give an overall summary at the very end. But there are going to be a couple of quirks about this gun that I want to talk about as well. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned for this one. So let's go ahead and get those specs out of the way. The overall length is 6.8 inches. The height is 4.8 inches. The barrel length is 3.6 inches. The width, and I'll give you a good look at that. It's 1.3 inches. The weight unloaded is 26.7 ounces, so it's not the lightest in the category, and I would throw this in the subcompact category. And speaking of which, why do I throw it there? Because the magazine capacity is 10 rounds. Now you get two 10 round magazines with this, and uh, some would say that that's not enough. I, I truly believe that uh, 10 rounds plus one, plus maybe a spare magazine, hopefully would get you out of most situations that uh, you or I may encounter, should that be the case. Now one nice thing, about about the S9, uh, just like its bigger brothers, it does take the larger magazines. This is actually a 15 round plus one magazine. Uh, it's got a little base plate, extended base plate on it for the M9A1. So you do get a little bit of magazine flexibility there. And uh, I am planning on eventually putting this in my carry rotation, believe it or not, uh, as soon as I can find a holster, more on that in a little while. Uh, but it's nice to be able to have a larger magazine as a backup or even as your primary if you would like to. In terms of the features, the Steyr has quite a few interesting features and also some different quirks that go along with it. Probably the most outstanding feature is going to be its grip, and specifically its grip angle. Now, uh, I harp a lot on ergonomics. Ergonomics are exceptionally important to me, and I found that Steyr firearms in general are exceptionally ergonomic. Now, you guys know that I like Glocks quite a bit, and Glocks have a, a, a little bit more of an extreme grip angle. Now, Steyrs are no different. They definitely have a more extreme grip angle. In fact, a little bit more extreme than Glocks are. Uh, so it might take a little bit of uh, working to get into something like this, especially if you're more into maybe Smith & Wessons or Sig Sauer's or something like that with a little bit more of a straight grip angle. Uh, this may take a little bit of time, but I actually really like this quite a bit. There's a lot going on here. I want to make sure that I give you a good look at the grip texture. The grip texture on the sides, I like. I, I think it's fine. It's not terrifically aggressive. I would say this is pretty medium, but it's also very comfortable. Now, when we look at the back strap, there's really not a lot going on here. It's not very bitey at all. In fact, um, I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more as we go along with the grip. Here's your front right here. <laughs> Definitely not a lot going on there. Uh, just some little horizontal stripes here that you can barely feel. Uh, with the M9 that I tested last year, I found that uh, the grip, there was enough there to grab hold of and, and enough contour going on right here under the beaver tail and also a little bit of an undercut. I didn't feel like the grip needed more. I mean, it's a little slick. There's no doubt about it. And I said the same on the M9. However, uh, the S9, because there's a little bit less grip going on, I'm actually finding that I need some more grip on this. And so I actually contacted my good buddy, Sandpaper Pistol Grips, uh, I'm flashing his website somewhere around here right now and said, man, I I've got to have some more grip on this gun. He was nice enough to send some along, so we're going to throw that on and see what that looks like. All right, we are back and I've got some grip tape on the gun, a little blue. I like to make things a little bit flashy when I can, especially for these videos. And guys, I have to give a shout out to my buddy Sandpaper Pistol Grips. I've got another package right here from him, actually for the Glock 19X. Uh, but if you're in the market to enhance your grips on any of your firearms, I recommend checking out Sandpaper Pistol Grips. He does a phenomenal job. He's got a great website, a lot of pictures of different firearms, samples of how he's done things, and uh, a lot of different, uh, a, a great variety for your firearms as well. A couple of different types of grips, all that kind of good stuff. So guys, if you're in the market to do anything like that, 
I definitely re uh, recommend checking him out. And he is one of us. He's actually among the community out there watching videos and on live streams and all that kind of stuff. So he's a very accessible guy and about as cool as, uh, as, cool as can be. So he does a great job. The grip tape uh, came out really well, except if you want somebody to install it, don't have me do it. As soon as I installed these, I immediately went to grip the gun. And of course, and I, I, I've done this with other grip tapes as well, I immediately make little creases in the fronts here. And it's happened on every time I've done this on a gun. Now, the nice thing is those creases are just exactly where my knuckles are. So it fits me really well. I think it's extremely comfortable. It adds a little bit of grip texture to it, which is exactly what the S9 needed. Uh, but again, if you're looking to install it, probably want to take a little bit more time. I'm pretty impatient with these things and want to kind of slap them on. But uh, but again, uh, the molds are fantastic. The cuts are, are exact and, uh, and, and it really does do exactly what it needs to do. So not a review on sandpaper pistol grips, but again, uh, something that's uh, kind of cool if you're in the market for that. So on with the rest of the controls here of the S9. So we've got our magazine release. And one thing that I've noticed about the magazine release, although I like it, it's fine, little button right here. I've noticed that uh, that if you just press it and let go real quick, that magazine's not going to fall out. Unfortunately, you really actually need to press it and hold it to make those magazines come out. Otherwise, you're going to be stripping out the magazine yourself uh, because it's got a little bit of a bite in there, unfortunately. So it's a little bit of a drawback, especially if you're trying to do things very quickly and change mags, uh, whatever the case may be. But if you can get used to that, I, it's, it's somewhat problematic, but not that big of a deal. Um, I, I have to ding it a little bit, of course, but, uh, uh, but it's workable nonetheless. Now that magazine release is not ambidextrous out of the box, although to my understanding, you can swap these around. If uh, those of you guys with experience with styres, if you haven't been able to do that, be sure to leave a comment, of course, as I know you will. And then our slide lock slide release. Uh, one thing that I really like about this, you'll see that it actually kind of protrudes just a little bit from the gun. That's really nice for, uh, for somebody like me with a grip that's a little bit more like this. I tend to not ride any controls, so I don't typically have problems with last round hold open or anything like that. If you do, if you tend to ride a gun like this a little bit more, you might have some issues with that. You might find that you're not uh, allowing that uh, that slide to lock on your last round. So something to be aware of, but it also can be quite useful if you use these to release the slide. And I do from time to time. So uh, it works well for me. Also, again, not ambidextrous out of the box. That's about it for the controls. We'll do a disassembly here in just a moment. But moving up the frame, a couple of things. We do have an accessory rail for your lights, lasers, grenade launchers, as you would expect. But then there are also a couple of little divots, one right there and then on the other side right here as well. I think these are actually really cool. And I use this as a reference point when I'm shooting. So it's kind of a nice little place to hold on to the gun and uh, just keep that, uh, uh, that memory going, which is great. So it's a nice little feature. Um, again, a little grip tape up here as well. It's kind of neat, kind of breaks up the lines of the uh, the black frame. So uh, again, that's it for the controls there. Now, in terms of disassembly, it's kind of an, uh, an, an interesting disassembly method right here. Of course, it is unloaded. Now, you do have to pull the trigger, which I've done, and I find it actually easiest to set this on the table. So I'll be zooming in in post on this, uh, but you'll notice that, uh, actually, I'll pull this up for just a moment. There's a little button right here with a fire and safe, and I'll come back to that button here in just a moment. But then we've got our release lever. It's a little bit unique that it's not on the uh, left side of the gun like most firearms out there. It's actually on the right. So what I do is I actually you have to press this little button in. So I'm going to press the button in. Again, I've already pulled the trigger. And then I'm going to pull my lever down and you'll notice that the slide actually pops right off. And then the rest of the parts on the interior of the gun are basically as you would expect. You've got your barrel, you've got uh, your guide rod and spring assembly. I believe that is steel in there. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but uh, it certainly feels like steel. And uh, and the rest of this, it's extremely clean. It really is. Um, it's very easy to maintain um, and get into all those places that you need to get into, which is great, um, especially the extractor and more on that here in just a little while. And just to give you an idea of what the rest of this looks like right here. Uh, nothing terribly exciting going on, but again, I, it's very easy to maintain, very easy to clean. And then throwing it back together, 
Just do that and you'll actually uh, flip your lever uh, back around like this and you're good to go. There's not a lot to it. But uh, I want to come back to this button here for just a moment because you'll notice again there's an S and there is an F on this and there are actually a couple of little holes right here. This firearm actually comes, uh, comes with a couple of little keys, this guy right here. And uh, this can actually serve as a safety on this if you want to lock up the firearm or anything like that. If you're not using it, you have that choice. Now, I'm not a big fan of these types of locks. I don't like mechanical locks on firearms, but uh, there are some people that definitely do. You have that option for sure. And again, it is right here as part of your uh, disassembly mechanism as well. So uh, that's it for the frame on this. We'll come back to the trigger here in just a little while. But in terms of the slide, there's not a lot going on. One of the criticisms, however, that I have of the S9, these uh, rear serrations, and it only has rear serrations, I find them to be pretty mild. Um, they're, they're usable if you've got dry hands, but if you've got wet hands or anything like that, you might find that this is just a little bit more problematic. There's not a lot of bite going on here. So you might actually have to uh, grab the slide like this and, and do kind of a full slide rack to, uh, uh, to clear any malfunctions or anything like that, whatever it is. So uh, that's also kind of a li little bit of a deal and I found the same with the M9, but, uh, but if you can get past that again, uh, because there are quite a few serrations on here, uh, not too big of a deal. Now. The contour of the slide is pretty cool. It is not completely blocky. They've actually uh, angled this just a little bit or sculpted it a little bit in their milling process to break some up, uh, break up some of those lines a little. And I like that. I like that quite a bit. I like the look of this firearm. But you'll notice, and I haven't started talking about this yet, um, if you haven't seen a Star before, there's something very unique about these sights right here. You'll see that these are actually trapezoidal sights. Yes, these are the sights that actually come with it. It'll give you a good look at the front right there, that triangle. And then your rear sights right here and basically you just line it up kind of like this and uh, that's how you shoot and you know it does take a little while to get used to I'm not gonna lie to you um, it takes some time but I've actually found that these sights are phenomenal partly because this front sight is actually it's pretty big um, and it's pretty easy to find especially as you start shooting this firearm faster and I'd say this gun likes to go kind of quick um, so the trapezoidal sights I love them I think they're fantastic take some time and I know some people don't really care for them very much I think they're pretty cool now one thing I would have liked to have seen or at least an aftermarket accessory which I don't know exists would be at least a high def sight. Um, I know night sights on something like this would be very difficult, but uh, but like an orange or bright yellow or something like that, I think that would be really nice and it would make it just a little bit easier to pick up. Although again, these sights do really well. It's been a lot of fun at the range and uh, had the same experience with the M9. So that's pretty much it for the features of the S9. There's a lot going on here, a lot to like and a couple of challenges and we'll get into some other challenges as we start talking about the shooting, which we'll do right now. Now, in terms of shooting, the S9 has a lot uh, going for it. First, the slide on the S9 is extremely low. So when it sits in your hand, just to give you an idea as best I can line it up, it's a pretty low gun. In other words, that, slides, that slide sits very low in the hand, so it's got a low bore axis, and you can get your hand obviously very high up on the gun uh, to allow for a lot of control with it. So um, that's a great asset to have with the Steyr, whether it be the S9 or M9 or L9 or C9, any of those uh, out there. But, uh, but I also found a couple of challenges. Now, without the grip tape on the gun, um, I, it, I, I found that it almost kind of wanted to jump around a little bit. It wasn't bad. Um, I was able to shoot, for the most part, pretty well with it, as you're seeing, but uh, uh, but there were a couple of times where I just knew that it needed a little bit of uh, grip enhancement. I'm glad I've got these sandpaper pistol grips now, so uh, excited to go back and do some more shooting with it. But uh, uh, but again, it kind of wanted to move around a little bit more than I would have liked, uh, but once I uh, kind of firmed up the grip a little bit uh, and buckled down on it, it became a lot of fun to shoot because, again, it's a very flat shooter. Those sights are very easy to pick up. Now, I can't ignore the uh, elephant in the room. One thing I've noticed with this particular styre, the ejection pattern's pretty crazy on it. Um, it's chucking things to the right, it's chucked things to the left, and even a couple of times it actually hit me um, in the forehead, believe it or not. Uh, the second time I took this out to shoot, I didn't have a hat with me, I just had uh, my glasses, of course, and my hearing protection, and, uh, and so I had a couple of times where some brass uh, cases hit me in the forehead. It wasn't painful, but, uh, but it was a little bit of a surprise, of course. It takes your attention 
away from shooting a little bit. So um, it's something that I definitely am going to be mindful of. And uh, and, I, and I found with other firearms that uh, sometimes you have to break in things like extractors. Um, it's not necessarily unusual for a new gun to have to be worked in just a little bit. And I'm hoping that's the case with the S9 because uh, I've only got maybe about 400 rounds through it. Um, and I, I consider a gun fully broken in right around a thousand rounds or maybe a little bit less than that. But uh, but I think it'll work its way in. The M9 I didn't have a single problem with. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to chalk this up to needing to be broken in. Of course, I'll keep you guys updated as we go along. But aside from that, this gun was an absolute pleasure to shoot. It really was. I mean, uh, once I got dialed in and got used to the trigger, it was absolutely fantastic. Now, as we talk about the triggers, as we always do, the Steyr trigger is very interesting. And, and I've said before, and I'll say it again, I think Steyr triggers are among some of the better triggers out there on the market, out of the box. And what I mean by that, you'll notice that uh, this has a pretty ordinary trigger. It does have your safety lever in it like a lot of firearms do, but it's a pretty good sized trigger. And there's actually an advantage to that. Um, once we get our safety lever depressed, you'll notice that there, this is it. This is the take up right here. There's not a lot of take up. It basically is ready to go and it's exceptionally smooth. There's no grit, there's no problems whatsoever here. And then when we uh, get to our break, there's your break and it's nice, it's crisp, it's clean, it's audible, it's just under five pounds. Again, out of the box, it's fantastic. So from a, uh, from a break perspective, this trigger just, it's tough to beat, it really is. However, when we get to the reset, and I know not everybody's real into resets, but, uh, but I think it's, it's a nice training aid if nothing else. Here's your reset. There it was. I don't know if you heard that or not. Now the microphone's pointed towards me, not the firearm. I'm gonna do this again, but there is not a lot of reset going on here, guys. So again, we've got our take up to our wall. There's our break, absolutely love that break. And then our reset, I'll try and be very quiet. There's your reset, and then we're back out to the start. So you can feel the reset a little bit, although it's not terribly tactile, and it is certainly not very audible. Now, in a self-defense situation, who cares? You're just gonna be uh, banging away at that trigger. So, um, and, and this gun, you can absolutely do that. And the nice thing, even if you are, are somebody that kind of slaps the trigger as you're shooting, this trigger is extremely forgiving. Now, if you train to reset, and if you shoot to reset, you, you might have a little bit of a struggle with this. You might have uh, to take some time to really get used to to, uh, where the trigger is resetting versus how it's telling you it's resetting. So not really that big of a deal, but, uh, but definitely something to be mindful of. There it is again. So um, overall, I love this trigger. I really do. Now the reset definitely could be better, but aside from that reset, this trigger again out of the box is, uh, is pretty tremendous. So what do I think of the Steyr S9A1 overall? Well, overall, I like the gun. In fact, I like the gun quite a bit. Now, there are a couple of things, obviously, that are a little bit uh, of a challenge or I've found not to be quite as desirable as I would like. The grips definitely needed some enhancement. Of course, I've got these sandpaper pistol grip uh, grip enhancements on here, and they're fantastic. So they've solved that problem. Uh, not a big deal. But then the ejection powder. Now, that's a little bit concerning, although, again, the rounds were clearing the chamber, and that's my number one criteria. So um, it wasn't uh, presenting any sort of um, mechanical malfunction or anything like that. So uh, for that, it's great. Now, um, hopefully it will uh, sort of dial itself in a little bit. Perhaps I'll need to help it and take everything apart and uh, give it a good cleaning, make sure everything, there aren't any obstructions or anything in there, what have you, uh, because I would like to get that a little bit more squared away. So they're ejecting a little bit more consistently, but, uh, but, but even still, again, mechanically speaking, it's working very well. And then the trigger out of the box, the trigger is absolutely stellar. Now it doesn't have much of a reset, but uh, but again, in a self-defense situation, we're probably not going to be shooting to a reset. So um, I can't really uh, ding it too much for that. So the Steyr is certainly a very quirky gun, no doubt about it. But I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you have the opportunity to try out a Steyr, whether it's the S9, the M9, the L9, or the C9, or the 40 caliber versions of any of those, I highly recommend you do it because it really is a very interesting shooting experience, um, not only because of the grip and the ergonomics, but also those trapezoidal sights. I mean, it really is just very different and you might find yourself really enjoying these firearms because they are flat, fun shooters. So guys, I'm excited to hear what you have to say about the Steyr S9A1 or any of your experiences with Steyrs. It's always a lot of fun to carry on a conversation with you guys. So I'm looking forward to that. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.